You see that Epiphone Explorer? It's going to get a trogly style makeover today right here on Geargasms. Hi everybody, welcome to Geargasms. I'm your host, Alan Barnes. Today, you see this beautiful Explorer. Well, it used to look like that picture back there. We featured it just a couple weeks ago on Freeform Friday. I like the way it looked. That's why I bought it. Obviously, it was true to the 58 Gibson Explorer spec. It is an Epiphone, of course, but I just wanted to give it a makeover. I wanted it to be like that first 76 Explorer I saw when I was 13 years old. But if you've watched this channel for a while, and I know you have, I'm not that great with mods. Now, if you're not familiar with Trogli, I think it's called Troglodyte's Guitar Show. Just Google it. You'll figure it out. Anyway, I thought, man, he does great work. He has tons and tons of subscribers and views. He might be the very guy that would be able to make this guitar over for me. So I set out about to contact Trogli. Didn't hear from him. Didn't hear from him. And when I finally heard back from him, he said, I don't know who you are, and please go away. So I responded back, I tried to tell him my story, and finally he sent me, the last email I heard from him was, look dude, I told you I don't know who you are. Now f off. Well, old Alan got his feelings hurt. And I thought, well if I can't get Trogli to do this, this makeover for me on this guitar, maybe, just maybe out there, I can find the next best thing. Tribute act. Lo and behold, I found a guy that does an amazing troglodyte tribute, more so than impersonation. He lives, he breathes it, he does guitar restorations. He agreed to appear on this channel as long as I didn't show his face. And this guitar is going to be made over by an artiste who refers to himself simply as Caveman, a tribute to the trog. Hi troglodytes, welcome back to the channel for your daily dose of guitar information. Now this guitar I got for a customer. He, he didn't really want me to say where he lived, but they won't ship this guitar where he lives. So I got it for him. Now I've had it a year, nearly a year, but I'll just tell him it's COVID. Oh. He'll understand. One thing I'm going to do before I send him the guitar is I'm going to change the pick guard. I bought this white one, and I tell you, it's really difficult to match up the, the screw holes just a millimeter here and there, it can make a big difference. Now ordinarily, if, if I'm swapping out a pick guard for a customer, I'd probably take the strings off. But you, you gotta save money where you can, you know? That's what I always say. I got my dad sneaks in the shot, but that's all right. Now, you know old Trogli, I never go near a guitar with a power tool. I've got these two Phillips head screwdrivers. You can get them at Stu Mac. They're $100 a pair, but you know, you want to get the quality stuff. Now, another funny thing about this guitar is the customer actually wanted a black pickguard on this. He hasn't seen the guitar yet, but I'm going to tell him it came with a white one because old Trogli wants to use this black pickguard on, on a different guitar for another customer. But I've noticed the switch is a little hinky, so I, while I've got the pickguard off, I'm going to take a look at that too. Nice and easy. It's coming out of there pretty quick. I got to tell you, I got to be careful with these screwdrivers because I don't, I don't want to scratch the guitar where it's going to a customer. I've had that happen before. It's never very good. People are unhappy when old Trogli sends them a scratch guitar. And I don't have a bench to work on while I'm doing this. So I put my Ghetto Fabulous Trailer Park towel on the floor while I remove these last remaining screws. You want to be careful not to strip the holes. It's very easy to do. And finally, down to that last screw. I'm curious to see, I'm curious to find out just what is under here. So now I'm pulling it out. You want to pivot over this way because you don't know how much slack you have in this wire. You don't want to just pull it straight out. Now, I was really hoping I could just look at this switch and see what was making it hinky. You know, I may just change this switch out the next time I'm in here with a soldering iron, which is probably going to be never, because like I said, <laughs> I've had a customer waiting for this for almost a year. 
I know I have a $73 Stumac pair of needle nose pliers around here somewhere. I'll put the link to these in the description. $78 sounds like a lot for a pair of needle nose pliers, but again, it really doesn't pay to scrimp on tools. And you can see we've got a pretty little switch there. Not too shabby. Doesn't feel like it's really, really high quality. Maybe I'll put a switch graft in there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure this pit guard fits. Now, I don't know if you can see what this says, but it says it's protected by clear plastic film. Do not remove the film until you're sure that the pit guard is suitable for your guitar. Uh, see, it's kind of non-refundable if I do that. Put it in there like I'm gonna put it in, but not really just to make sure that the holes line up. Now I'm seeing fairly reasonably good alignment with these holes. I think it's going to work for me. So with that, I'll go ahead and butt fuck the warranty by taking this plastic pit guard off. And I know guys, you, old Trogly doesn't normally cuss like that. Trogly feels emotions just like everybody else. So now I'm going to go ahead and remount this switch. Being careful to line it up the way it was, we want to make sure that up is still the rhythm pickup, down is still the bridge pickup. Let's just press on the back there a little bit. Not too hard, you don't want to break it. <laughs> I've had that happen and it's not fun. Let me just snug that up a little bit. Take one last look. Oh, let's look at the cavity while we're in here. We haven't done that. There's a lot of wood chips and just a lot of really ugly bullshit inside this cavity. That's just a lot of chips. I'll pull it out of here. You could just about make a bird's nest with the garbage that's in there. Shame on you, Epiphone. They really, really have been coming along, but to be fair, this is an older line that was an AMS exclusive. I will replace the screws exactly in the order that I took them out. But also, it is important to make sure you use the exact same screw in the exact same hole that it came out of. I know it sounds crazy, but if you're going to do it right, you've got to be willing to go that extra six millimeters. <laughs> and that's what she said. Old Trogley, he loves a good, that's what she said. I'm sorry, friends. Your daily dose of guitar information has been corrupted by a smutty, a smutty kind of mood old Trogley's in today. Putting those screws in with my $40 Stumac screwdriver, I'm only quoting the price of this single one. It was 80 some dollars for the pair of them, but I round it down because it's Stumac. This is a three-ply pit guard just like the one it replaced, except it's a different color. Now there's a lot of people who will swear that the pit guard color doesn't affect the tone. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm quite sure with this new white pit guard, this thing will sound much, much more the way the original owner intended. And again, I'll just lie to him about the other pit guard because I have another guitar that I'd really like to put that on. He won't mind COVID. Aww. All right, here's another thing we're gonna do today. We're going to change the knobs on this Explorer. A customer wanted it, and he kind of liked the black knobs, but I got these at Stumac. I think they'll look a lot better. Now, they do cost a little more, but I still think at $45 it was a bargain. Try not to scratch the guitar. Oh, and look at that. It came off really easy. These knobs that they put on them are really kind of cheap. They're sort of top hat. They're not at all period correct. So since we've had success with the first two, let's do the other one. Oh, that came off even easier than the first. We'll just line up the numbers. I think 10 is where you want to be right here so they're all the same. Oh, my fingers aren't strong enough to get. Oh, there it goes. Woo. I was really afraid there for a minute that I wasn't going to be able to get that one off. Alright, now let's play this thing and hear how it sounds. Thank you. 
So what'd you think? Is this thing not a beaut now? Oh my goodness, it is so gorgeous. It still needs a little bit of work as far as the setup goes. I didn't want to push my Trogly tribute guy, but so far, but for right now, I love it. It is beautiful. It was exactly what I wanted the minute I ordered it. I want to thank my special guest, Caveman, a tribute to the Trog. I think he did a great job. His vocal delivery probably needs a little bit of work if I'm being hypercritical, but I did appreciate the fact that he seemed to have nailed his fashion sense to a T. Well, what did we learn today? We learned that when you're a tiny little dinky crap YouTube channel like mine and you try to get a great big celebrity named a troglodyte to do something for you and be on your show and do a collab, as the kids like to say, you might not get as far as you think. We also learned that if you're even a little bit famous, there's probably a tribute act somewhere out there. And hence, we had Caveman, the Trog, today. He was wonderful. We also learned that I make stuff up, and it's highly unlikely that Troglodyte ever corresponded with me whatsoever, much less cussed at me. But what are you going to do? As always, I thank you for your time. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Tell some of your low-rent friends about Geargasms. I know you got them. You can buy a t-shirt if you would like. Whatever you do in the next seven days, don't tell Trogly about it. But if you do tell him about it, make sure you remind him to sip up. But play more guitar, watch less YouTube, and keep coming back here week after week for more Geargasms.